everyone. For those of you in the room that I don't know, my name is Andy Noel, Director of Athletics at Cornell University. And I extend to all of you who are here this afternoon a warm welcome, especially members of the media, our current basketball players, local friends, university faculty and staff who've joined us, and especially to Brian and Jen and the three little ones, and uh, Dylan, Owen, and Cooper. So we extend you a very, very warm welcome. It's uh, a real pleasure to officially announce that Brian Earl is the Robert E. Gallagher Class of 44 Head Coach of Basketball. I believe that all of us in this room and many, many others in short order are going to recognize what a, a terrific coach, mentor, and leader that we have with us in Brian. Members of the media, I think, have been distributed a fact sheet that Jeremy Hardigan, our Associate AD for Communications, puts together that has a lot of the basic facts that recognize the terrific aspects of Brian's resume and his considerable accomplishments as both a player and a coach. But for those of you uh, watching on the web that have not had the opportunity to see that fact sheet, I will mention a few of those particular elements. And they include being the assistant coach and the associate head coach at Princeton University from 2007 to 2016. Brian helped Princeton get to five postseason championships. His first year on staff when he returned, the program went 3-11, and 11, and with his impact, and I'm giving him considerable, a considerable piece of that impact, maybe all of it, but that's probably not fair to the head coach, but uh, they never finished lower than third and included championships, top three or better. In 2010, FoxSports.com voted, named Brian as the assistant coach of the year in the Ivy League. He was the Ivy League Player of the Year and the Princeton Athlete of the Year and was a John Wooden finalist for the National Coach of the Year. He played on three Ivy teams, participated in three NCAAs and an NIT. His junior year, Princeton was ranked, and this is a player, his junior year, they ranked number seven in the national poll at the end of the season, which is pretty terrific. Brian emerged from a large pool of qualified candidates, numbering over 100, and a cohort of nine candidates who interviewed with Larry Quant and me out in Houston at the NABC National Convention. It was during the Final Four weekend. Three exceptional candidates were invited to campus for two days of interviews. And I want to take a moment to extend Larry Quant, Deputy Director, who led this critical search for us. He did a terrific job, very organized, and um, he made a terrific contribution to this search. And I also want to especially thank the athletes that were involved in the search, because not only uh, did they take this extremely seriously, they were very thorough and, and did an unbelievably thoughtful job, and we appreciate their thoughtful input. And so just in closing, I just want to mention that uh, in Brian, we have a winner on and off the court. He's the new leader of Big Red Basketball. I know that the team that interviewed him and spent time with him are thrilled that he's our new leader. And uh, I ask all of you to join me in welcoming Brian and his terrific family. Thank you. Thank you. Just raise it a little bit. <laughs> That's not a great way to start. <laughs> um, I, I just want to start with some acknowledgments um, for, for a few people who are dear to me who are at home. Uh, my, my mother uh, couldn't be here. She's at uh, home probably uh, wrestling with the internet right now. and. Um, you know, she, she couldn't tell you the difference between a five-second call or a ten-second call, but she'll, she'll know who to root for here in the next few years. Uh, my brother Dan, who's a head coach uh, at Virginia Military Institute, my father, 
played basketball at Rutgers uh, with Jim Volvano. Um, my stepmother, Cindy, and uh, my sister, Rebecca. Um, you know, through all this stuff, when you get to a point like this, um, you know, it's the people behind the scenes that do so much. And so uh, I've leaned on them for so long, and, and they've leaned back really well. So I want to thank them. For, for the people in attendance, um, I brought them. Against all odds, they got here. Um, <laughs> my uh, my mother-in-law, uh, Barbara, is in the back holding one of, of the guys. My wife, Jen, is uh, in charge of the second. And I'm really nervous about the, the third guy up front. <laughs> Uh, you, you guys are now babysitters. Um, so Dylan, Dylan is my four-year-old up front. Uh, Owen is the two-year-old in, in Jen's hands, and Cooper's the one talking. He's one. Um, <laughs> this is now officially a record for the longest that they've sat still. So uh, we don't want to push it too far. So I'm, I want to keep it somewhat brief. Um, a few thank yous, obviously. Um, Larry, Aquan, Andy Noel uh, did so much work in the last few weeks with interviews and traveling all over the place and, and whittling down a huge field. And I'm, I'm completely honored to, to be selected as the, their, their, uh, their guy here. Um, I had a chance to meet so many people in the administration. Um, and the, um, the, the ease of with which the, uh, the process went was amazing. Um, all of the people I met are exceptional. And they're exceptional because they were so welcoming to me. Um, they're so welcoming to my family. They um, are at ease with each other. There's a huge amount of respect for each other. And they all love Cornell. Um, and so uh, it was just amazing to meet up with them, to have the three-day process that we had. And it's a tribute to, to Andy and Larry and everyone in the department to, to see what teamwork they had. Um, just a few things. Um, Cornell University. So the extent of Cornell for me has been driving 13 times in the last 20 years, driving to the gym, walking in, doing some sort of basketball thing, walking out in the dark, and driving home. Um, and so it gives you no understanding of what a unique place this is. And I had a chance to tour it um, with Andy and some other people. And I'm, I'm just so excited and blown away by the opportunity. Um, if you haven't been here, you have to experience what a real college town is like. And it's unique. Uh, it's unique nationally, and it's unique within our league. And I think just the, the scale and scope of the opportunities here are second to no one. And I, I really am excited about explaining that to whoever will listen. Um, I know alumni, people outside the program, recruits. You have to know that this is an exceptional, unique, wonderful place. And so um, I just, again, had such a good feel for it. Uh, better than wanting the job once you got here, it was absolutely 100%. I understand we're going to get this done. And, and Cornell University is something we should all be very, very proud of. Um, finally, just some stuff, men's basketball. Um, uh, I think we want to celebrate the history. Uh, finally, I can celebrate this history. Um, I was on the receiving end of beatings in the 08, 09, and 2010 from their great teams. And I'm, I'm so excited to turn around and say, we were awesome. Uh, we were awesome in the Sweet 16. Ryan Whitman was unguardable. Lewis Dale. Uh, I've had to explain away the mistakes I've made on the defensive end for so long that um, I'm really looking to embrace that team. But also the teams that I played against, um, the guys should always feel welcome to come back. The 1988 championship team. Um, there's such a strong history here. And I think we should celebrate that as well, not just the university. Um, I think uh, in closing, sort of, uh, it's a lot about the future. Okay, and the future's sitting up here, a few of the guys. Um, and I, I want you to know that, um, number one, uh, I'm going to recruit to this future. These guys are here, and they're putting the work in. And we're actually going to put some work in here in the next few, uh, few minutes after the, the press conference just to get out on the court. Um, but we, we're going to recruit people to, that you're proud of, that Cornell University is proud of, student athletes who do the work in the classroom, do the work on the court. And, and we, myself and my staff, will be certain to get people in here that you're proud of. We're also going to work hard every day, every day, everywhere we go, OK? Um, hard work makes up for so many deficiencies. And I, I hope that when people get done playing against us, they'll say at least they, they work hard. 
and we're going to get to that as soon as possible. And then finally, we're going to represent Cornell basketball in every, every day and every way that we can. Um, so that on the court, off the court, walking around campus with your head held high, uh, talking to other undergraduates and graduates and professors in the summer, everyone you meet, I think, I will hope, will walk away from a meeting with one of our guys saying, that guy's impressive and he represents Cornell basketball. Okay, and so that's the vision going forward. Um, I just wanna say, uh, with all my heart, uh, go Big Red, I appreciate it, thank you. So uh, we open it up for some questions from the group, including uh, any of the players that want to ask a question. Careful, for, for, careful. For <laughs> Okay. Uh, the timetable uh, with regard to meeting with Andy and staff, um, I'm trying to remember, I, I'm, I'm uncertain what today is, but uh, um, the, the job came open and um, I believe we, a good place to meet with candidates is at the final four because a lot of the, the coaching staffs are out there. So um, Larry and Andy were able to reach out to me. Um, they did buy me a great dinner one of our numerous stakes we had together, uh, and we had a really good time uh, out in Houston for, for a meeting. I guess that would have been Thursday of the Final Four. I think maybe Wednesday or Thursday of the Final Four. And then I was lucky enough to be asked back to campus, and that was uh, last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I got to meet with Andy and Larry and, and uh, numerous other people on staff here. Yes? Uh, what do you think was your biggest uh, uh, the advantages of me, uh, probably a better question for Andy. I wonder the same things when I go home at night, um, but uh, I, I think it's a unique, uh, a unique um, league, the Ivy League. Um, I have some knowledge of the Ivy League from, from being in it for 13 years uh, as a player and a coach. Um, you know, you have to sort of understand the, the ins and outs and the little things you come up against that if you speak to someone outside the, of the league, they shake their head and say, I think I got it. And you say, no, I don't think you do. <laughs> There's certain things here that you need to understand about how exceptional uh, these guys can be and how you can find them and how you can convince them. So I think that maybe was a pretty big separator. We had had a, a good run at the school in Jersey, and, and um, so I think that put me in the, in the, the running as well. Yeah, you know, it, it, just for, sort of professionally, I've been exploring them. I, I, I've, I got so much great interest from, from Cornell and was so eager to come out here. Um, you know, I had been involved in, in other uh, searches, but uh, again, it really was an epiphany when I came up here and actually saw the campus <laughs> that I, I, was, I was really enthusiastic about the opportunity. So uh, I think Larry and Andy are gonna ask me to stop reaching out to them and having other people reach out to them. They've heard enough from me and my camp, but you know, it's amazing what actually getting out there and getting a feel for what a great place Cornell is, what that did for me. And uh, I really started to put the heat on these guys to, to uh, you know, make a decision um, without thinking about the other candidates too much. Well, initially, it's before you even become a coach. You think you're good enough to be a head coach, which is uh, really incorrect. Um, but, y you know, it takes a few years, and, and you get your feet wet, and you understand the things that you didn't understand as a player, the things that go on behind the scenes, and, and um, the stuff that, that no one sees that needs to change. And, and, and it's not always a, uh, from one day to the next that it changes. It's, it's a process, and we're going to be working through that here in the next few days. Um, you know, I, I think I've, I've had a chance to, to, um, to study under some really good coaches, and Sidney Johnson was one uh, who was at Princeton and brought me in. And, um, you know, he, he, he's a, a, a former teammate, so we're very good friends. And, you know, he gave me a lot of confidence that I could do it. And then continuing with, with Mitch Henderson, 
um, you know, and, and we're so close. He was in my wedding, and uh, I was at his wedding, and our kids are, are all growing up together. But, uh, you know, the confidence that they have that you can do it when sometimes you don't know if you can. And, and so it wasn't a day where I said this is it, but it, it's a process just like everything else. Yeah, about uh, philosophies, um, you know, make shots. I'm, I'm into making shots uh, offensively, uh, however we need to do it. Um, I know we have guys who make shots here. I, I, I believe in getting the best shot we can get every possession. That's offensively. And then defensively, um, I, I, I believe uh, we, we have a fast team. And um, we may have to make a few tweaks here and there, but um, we played fast this past season. We, we pressed a little bit. And I don't think you have to start from scratch with these guys. I mean, they, they've put the work in. Um, they're, they're built for speed a little bit. So you may see a little bit of um, you know, pressure if it makes sense uh, in, in a way that we can be very solid with it. So I'm going to get in, uh, onto the court here, uh, I hope, in the next few minutes and, and, and really sort of dig down because from the outside in, I've watched them play 14 or 15 times on video, but you can't do anything until you get on the court with them. So that's one of the, the things uh, uh, that I'm most excited about is to, to figure out what makes sense. And, and I think a coach can really adapt to the players um, rather than some coaches who make the players adapt to the coach. You know, I'm working through um, the staff makeup right now. Uh, the guys um, that are here are doing a great job. And, and you know, it's something that I, I cleaned out my desk uh, down in Jersey yesterday. I'm here today. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I'm being very methodical and process driven about what, what the staff may be. So um, I'm going to take a few minutes when, when I, we get off the road after this weekend recruiting, which is a big recruiting weekend, and take a breath and, uh, and then go from there once, once uh, I can sit down with, with Andy and Larry and make some good decisions. Coach, having been a former player and a long time assistant in this league, what's your anticipation uh, and maybe excitement level knowing that next year and coming out we'll have a postseason tournament finally in the Ivy with that? Well, I'm excited. I mean, it gives you um, a chance to to play for something, for, to play the whole season. And, and the one thing about the league is sometimes when you're eliminated in the fourth weekend, um, you can't get that extra effort out of your guys. And so I think it's good for everybody. It's good for the league. It's great for us. We're going to be playing for Ivy League championships and for the conference tournament. So I'm excited. I'm excited. It's, it's another thing to sort of reach for as a, as a program and as a team. And um, you know, I think it's, it's good all around. Um, maybe a couple tweaks here and there with uh, some of the way it's run. We could get it up to, to Cornell for a year or two. But um, those are things for down, down the road. Right. When I first received the offer, who, who did I tell? You have to go through. The boss is over here, uh, Jen. Um, and um, so she was first. And I, I, it, was, it was in everybody's best interest to keep it as quiet as possible. I'm, I'm very close to my older brother. So he knew with the um, permission of Andy and Larry. Um, and then I, I kept it quiet, you know, as, as much as I can. And then, you know. You have to talk to mom and dad and everybody, so they're they're wondering how everything went. And uh, you know, I was trying to do the steel trap treatment, but um, you know, once once uh, people started finding out, uh, I went down the line with with family members as well. Well, what do you think it's going to take to get this team to that elite level that it was a couple of years ago? Because it, the town, the whole community was just at another level of buzz. Right. When Yeah, what I think about um, getting to the elite level, you know, I think you have to buy into the everyday concept. If there was someone or something to plug in immediately to get it done, uh, I would do that. Um, but these guys can play, you know, and, and, and I've watched them uh, a bunch on video. Uh, I'm going to start to get to know them. But what I get a sense for is that they want to win. 
And so that's a really good starting point. If they're committed to winning and committing to getting better and bigger and stronger and listening and learning, I think you go day by day whenever you can be together to get to the point where all of a sudden um, you're there, you know, you're in the hunt. And it doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen as soon as next season, in my mind. Um, it's just a, mount, a, a matter of us getting on the same page and working at it together and figuring out the bumps in the road and getting past them. Um, so, I, again, I'm so excited uh, to get a chance to, to work the guys out and get a feel for where we are. Um, and I have a feeling that there's some, there's some really good talent out there that, that not everyone knows about at this point. Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm, I have to read just a message that I received. And I'm not going to read the whole message, but it gave you a little, a little insight into this guy that we just hired. And it's from a gentleman who played with Brian and who's a very successful Division I coach. He said, you've chosen a winner on the court and a gentleman off the court. What I think you recognize during the interview process is that, despite Brian's boyish looks, on the court, he will rip your heart out and wink at you as the ball is going through the net. <laughs> Players who want to win have that same knack to them, and they will gravitate to and then follow Brian. I'm excited to follow Cornell basketball, and we'll be cheering for Brian, Brian and his program. Someone that knows him dearly. So yes, he's a sweetheart, but he's extremely competitive. So with that, I know that Brian will take questions from uh, the media that want a one and one time with him. So thanks everybody for joining us and don't hesitate to stick around and uh, say hello to Brian. Bye bye. <laughs>